Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as mentioned, my name is Graham Kricher, and I'm a member of the two-a-day technical team. And today, I'm, we're going to get a little bit more technical now, but hopefully not too technical, and I'm going to attempt to unpack the question, how do I know what to plant? Now, if we consider that the recommended replanting rate in apple and pear production is 4% annually, we can see that this is a very relevant question to all fruit growers. That is whether you are 200 hectares or 40 hectares or whether you've been at it for 40 years or you're just starting out, doesn't matter. Okay, it's working. Now, at first glance, it seems to be such a simple question. And in truth, some producers answer it in a really simple way. One strategy is to simply wait to the last minute, phone up the nurseries, and to see what they have left in their buffer stock. And then you simply plant what you can get. And seeing as beggars can't be choosers, you'll probably get lower quality trees of uh, inferior sign variety, probably on the wrong rootstock for your site, but so be it. A second group um, may just play follow the leader, and you simply spy on your, on your neighbors and you copy them. And in truth, this is probably less risky than strategy number one, and, but that's unless your neighbor is an option one subscriber. Now, if you believe that strategies one and two will bring you success in the long term, then you're lucky. You have the next 20 minutes off, you can have an early tea break, and you can spend the time doing something more interesting than listening to me. But if you, like me, believe that this seemingly simple question requires a complicated decision-making process to obtain an accurate answer, well, then you're stuck with me for now. So why the complicated route? Why is it necessary to complicate things? Now, I, I didn't realize it, but there's a handout on risk management on your tables today. Um, I didn't get a tip from Vian. But whether you're involved in primary, secondary, or tertiary agriculture, the fact of the matter is that your business has a high level of exposure to a variety of risks. And unfortunately, not all of these risks can be mitigated by sound management. Whether we like to hear it or not, we're exposed to risks regarding water scarcity and droughts, or floods, volatile exchange rates, enhanced risks, and costs in our business. Climate change is a reality. <laughs> I missed one. Um, climatic phenomena like El Nino can impact your business. Climate change is a reality. Later in the week we can listen to Professor, Professor Midgley on this topic and I'm quite looking forward to that. Extreme weather events are occurring more and more often and it can be devastating. You add to that economic uncertainty, corruption and crime, rural unrest, uncertainties regarding labor, political and land ownership uncertainty, the depletion of fossil fuels, which we largely depend on for energy, fertilizer, and agrochemicals. Now, I'm sure you're going to agree with me that we're probably all crazy and agriculture and fruit farming is a risky business. So my view is that the ultimate planting decision that a producer makes should drive down the risk exposure in the business and not increase it. As a fruit grower, it's not in your interest to make an uninformed or hasty decision. Furthermore, planting a variety or a fruit type that is not suited to the unique characteristics of your farming unit increases the risk exposure rather than lowers it in your business. So how should you approach this issue, this process? Now, I believe it's beneficial to view the planting decision as having three aspects or three different spheres. A represents the necessary infrastructure outside of your own farming operation that's required to get the product you produce from your farm to the correct market. Examples are cooling, packing, marketing facilities. B represents the market, and the box you need to tick here is whether there's a willing consumer for the product that you are aiming to produce. And C represents your farming unit and its unique characteristics. What fruit types or varieties are ideally suited to production under your unique set of conditions? 
all three of these aspects need to work together in a successful scenario. It just won't work if you produce a product with a distinct market, but you have no way of placing it there. In the same way, you will not achieve success with a product that you produce and handle effectively if the product does not have an accepting market. Thirdly, just because a certain product has effective handling infrastructure and an accepting market, it doesn't mean that this product is suited to your growing conditions on your farm. You need to look for a sweet spot where all three of these aspects work together. Now I'm going to briefly stand still at each of these three spheres. Um, and firstly, A, the availability of infrastructure outside of your own farm. Now this illustration is a simplified supply chain in the fruit business. And from left to right, we have production, transport and cooling, packaging, marketing, and then some form of distribution to the market where eventually the product is consumed. Whichever product you decide to produce needs to flow down this chain from production to consumption. And to achieve this, you either need to be in a position where your own business is vertically integrated in the supply chain, or you need access to a service provider that can do it for you. Remember that the more integration the primary producer has in the value chain, the more value can potentially make its way back down the chain onto the farm. Secondly, let's look at market acceptability. Now, in order to lower risk in the planting decision, you have to try to select a product or a variety that can be sold in more than one market. And, for more, and more than only the class one fruit produced should have a market. Remember that we mostly farm in marginal climates and we usually produce a portion of, let's call it sub-optimum quality fruit. And it's important that whatever you choose to plant has value across the whole crop and not only for a small portion of it. Talk to your marketers and liaise with industry organizations in order to gather more information on this aspect. Now, I'm not going to say too much about variety selection, and that's why Dr. Guerra is here at the symposium, and he'll be talking later in the week. But please do not plant inferior strains of any variety. Improved strange, strains generally achieve higher packouts, better color, they require less picking events, and eventually it will achieve a higher income back on your farm. And if you decide to try a unique and hopefully well-evaluated new variety, make sure that it has some form of marketing plan or investment back into the trademark that backs it up. Our industry has many excellent plant improvement organizations who are more than willing to provide information on improved strains and new varieties. The third sphere of the planting decision is the unique characteristics of your own business unit, or your farm in this case. Every farm is unique, and this holds true for your natural resources, such as climatic conditions, water availability, soil characteristics, and the different sites or slopes on your farm. Your farm may not receive the same amount as winter, of winter chill as the next one over, or maybe you have more or less of a chance of frost during blossom. A nice and very helpful online tool is the Cape Farm Mapper application available on elsenberg.com. And here you can access a lot of information, including climatic as well as geographical data on your own farm. Furthermore, all farms are unique regarding the availability of infrastructure and labor on the farm to produce and harvest the crop. It's an important initial step in the planting decision to quantify your natural resources. And I strongly recommend that you get an industry expert on, bo on board, have a soil survey done, and get a medium to long term plan on board. I know many producers shy away from the cost of this service. In my book, that is, however, a really bad excuse. If you consider that a soil survey and development plan will probably cost you less than 1.5% of the total establishment cost of a hectare of apples. 
to establish a hectare, you're in for more than 300,000 rand at this stage. The other side of the coin is that making the wrong decision can cost a whole lot more. Please remember that poor quality trees can make even the best soil and site combination look extremely average over the long term. And having a medium to long term plan on the table and being, ordered to order, being able to order your trees in advance can help to avoid such a situation. Just as each farm is unique as far as soils and water is concerned, it's also unique regarding labor and infrastructure. Let's grab some of this. Now, any planting decision you make will have an impact on the picking window in your business. And ideally, your variety mix will allow you to utilize your labor and your infrastructure throughout the harvesting season without any pronounced peaks or valleys or stops or starts. What I suggest here is that you build yourself a tool tailor-made to your business. Something like a simple Excel spreadsheet can help a lot to get your head around this, around this situation. Now this is just one example of such a spreadsheet that I'm borrowing from one of my growers for today. On the left here, he's made a list of variety choices tailor, uh, that will, could work on his farm and he sorted it from top to bottom according to expected harvest date. Over here, he's entered a five-year planting and expansion plan for his farm from 2016 to 2020 that will enable him to achieve the target that he set himself for 2021. On the right, he's even got some productivity calculations determining how many pickers he would require and even how many loads his truck would need to deliver to the pack house at any given stage of the harvest after the expansion is complete. He's determined that after 2021, when he reaches full production, he will require nine picking teams, each with 12 pickers. Down here, he even has the amount of tractor spray card combinations that he'll require to effectively handle pest and disease management on the farm. As you can see, a very simple tool, but a lot of information tailor-made to your situation. Now, obviously, orchards take a few years to get into full production, so ideally would, you would want to incorporate that fact into the planning as well. Uh, before I conclude and summarize, Mr. Chairman, um, please allow me to suggest that you as producer tackle this problem from the outside inwards. Start by thinking very generally. For example, determine what fruit types work well in your area. Get an expert on board and work through the different aspects of the planting decision. Have a soil survey done. Get a long-term plan on the table. This will allow you to focus and plan ahead and at the end, reach a timeliest and accurate conclusion. So in summary, the planting decision is very important, and it doesn't matter how big or small, mature or young your business is. The correct decision must be tailor-made to your unique set of circumstances. Not all varieties will work on all farms. Remember, industry experts are available at a fraction of the total investment cost, and it's not all that difficult to get it right if you plan ahead. Hasty decisions or inferior plant material will come back to bite you in the end. Thank you. Thank you very much.